derived from the Indo-European root men, which is also the source of the Greek mnemosine, Latin Minerva, and English mind, mental, and memory. The muses were therefore both the embodiments and sponsors of performed metrical speech. Musicae, whence music, is the art of the muses. In the archaic period, before the widespread availability of books, this included nearly all of learning. The first Greek book on astronomy by Thales was set in dactylic hexameter, as were many works of pre-Socratic philosophy. Both Plato and the Pythagoreans explicitly How are you guys doing today? Having a good morning so far? The projector in this room doesn't work, so I'm going to sort of wing it back here with the, the marker and everything. My name is Jim Shireman. I have a Pittsburgh-based website and blog podcast called sportsocracy.org. This is Alex Landefeld. I have a, a Pittsburgh-based uh, 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 podcast um, along with my co-host who is uh, not in there. Um, and uh, the, the podcast is a, uh, it's called Minute Lit and it's about literature. Uh, it's something like what uh, uh, listen to a couple of them and it's really pretty interesting. Uh, any of you who were not in my last session, I mumble and I ramble. <laughs> All those things, and I talk fast, so if there's anything that you need a clarification on, throw your hand up, tell me to shut up, tell me to go back. Do what you gotta do to get my attention. So, um, we're here for Intro to Social Networking. Um, anybody here tell me what a social network is? No brave souls, huh? It's all there. there. Close. Um, it is an online community, primarily though, it's in for uh, media sharing. Um, sharing po blog posts, sharing pictures, sharing video, sharing audio, all those things are, are primarily what make up a social network. Yep. Um, uh, essentially what you do is you accumulate a friends list, people you know, people you've met, people you admire, that are on that same community-driven site, and uh, basically share content with Put your favorite blog, blog posts up on that site. Put your favorite videos up on that site. Everybody's heard of YouTube, I assume. YouTube's a big example of that. Um, different things like that. Share your, your favorite audio. And uh, a lot of websites and a lot of blogs, mine in particular, benefit greatly from that. From uh, word of mouth on sites like, not particularly me on Yahoo, but on different, or uh, on YouTube, but on different social media sites like MySpace. A lot of people learn about my site that way. A lot of people listen to my content that way. And it's all free, and that's a good thing. So, um, Alex here is going to cover a little bit how social networking got its start. Yeah, um, some of the sites I got into, I only got into the social stuff like three or four weeks ago. Um, so I'm a total newbie. Um, and that, uh, uh, Dawn, who uh, is still in absentia, um, is uh, uh, sort of introduced to me because she said, what, you don't have a MySpace page? And I said, well, no, not yet. So as soon as I set one up, my wife said, what, you made a MySpace page? <laughs> um, but uh, so uh, very early on, like 10 years ago, I guess, uh, GeoCities um, was a place where you could set up your own website. And it, it really wasn't a social network in the, the modern sense. You didn't have links to other people necessarily who also had links back to you built into the database of GeoCities, which is really what MySpace is. 
Um, but GeoCities, you, you, you had friends who were setting up websites and you could link to their websites and they would link to you and it, it basically, and GeoCities set it up so that you had like, um, I, I was in the rainforest community um, where theoretically uh, those people in a community have sort of a, a certain bent to their, um, uh, to their uh, uh, web pages. Um, and then there would be like the, uh, the shopping community or the, um, I don't know, silk shirts community or something like that. But basically everybody's setting up websites that are uh, very similar. Um, and they, they'd all have links either to one another or links to various locations and things like that. Um, and, and probably the, the, the newest thing in, in that regard are the blogging sites um, like Blogger where uh, uh, people will uh, just, it's so easy to start a blog, you just log in, you set up your blog and you start going. Um, and then you link to your friends who have similarly set up blogs and things like that. Um, so in a sense, that becomes a, a simplified uh, social network. Um, what Jim is listing here is some of the basic uh, uh, social networks uh, in the modern sense. Uh, MySpace and Flickr and YouTube, uh, Dig, uh, Netscape? Okay. Is it? Okay. Well, one, so the cool thing about the new social sites is that they have a, a database built in that when you set up your site, um, it, it, it links it into email, it links it into chat, it links it into blogging, um, and then you can link in, either invite other people to uh, have a, a friend link to your website, um, or you'll get invitations from other people to become a friend of their website. And then in MySpace, for example, it, it puts a picture of that person um, or what they choose to be their picture, so it doesn't have to be their picture. Uh, for Dawn's, hers is a, a picture of an angel or something like that. Uh, mine, it's a picture, I have a, 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 a marble bust of Alexander the Great, um, and because I didn't want to put my own picture out there, um, but he is another Alex, so I figured, why not? Um, and uh, it just, and people put up, uh, you know, like the, the typical, uh, um, on the internet, they don't know your dog. So, uh, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and a lot of people, particularly people that are starting out on the internet, and starting out with blogs and things like that, look at a place like MySpace and they say, why would I want to be on there? It's full of pedophiles and 13-year-old kids and spam, and it is full of spam. Um, you know, a big problem with MySpace is there's so many users now, um, millions and millions, that um, marketers have, have sort of moved in there and started sending unsolicited sorts of things to people in there because there's money to be made. There's such a huge user base. But, um, the biggest reason is just to get the word out about your blog and about your, your content, whether it's audio or video or whatever the case may be. It's very easy to embed those sorts of things into a MySpace page so people can sort of stumble upon it. And it's, it's sort of that concept of a friend of a friend sort of thing. I know this person and I'm looking at their site and oh, who's that? I click on their thing. The next thing you know, they end up in, in my MySpace page reading my content, and if they like it, maybe they come back again, those sorts of things. MySpace is huge right now, it's all over the news for good and for bad, and mostly bad. <laughs> A lot of people uh, sort of disparage MySpace as, as, like I said, a, a sort of a cesspool. And you're not altogether wrong, but the fact remains that there are more people on MySpace than any other social network in like, probably in the world, certainly in the United States. So most bloggers and content providers have some sort of presence on there, simply because of that. Uh, there's another site, which I did not put up here because I don't have my projector, but there's a new site called Verb. And I will, uh, with the absence of all this stuff, I will go up on uh, bootcampph.org after this and put up all the show notes from what I talk about and link to everything so that you guys have an easier way to go through and, and take a look at actually what I'm talking about. It would be nice if I could put it up, but it didn't work out that way. Didn't Justin put that on the site? He, he, Justin may have put it on the site. He may have. Verb is a new community that's very much like MySpace. Um, it's sort of fledgling that a lot of new media people are starting to flock to, which is also pretty recommended. Um, there aren't nearly as many people on there at this time, but it's getting there. I, I have a feeling it'll get there. Um, some other big examples of that kind of stuff are Flickr, 
which I don't know, has anybody ever heard of Flickr? Mm -hmm. It's a site that's bought up by YouTube, or uh, yeah, by YouTube, by Yahoo, uh, that you can share photos with people. Entire catalogs of your family photos and whatever. And what you're able to do is use a, a, a form of communication called tagging. So you put up keywords on your photo. You take a picture of something here. You put it on Facebook. Facebook's a good one. Yeah. Which I didn't put on there. Thanks. With uh, Flickr, you tag your photos with categories. Different things like, if I took a picture here, I could put Pittsburgh, I could put Food Camp, I could put Justin Kalanacki, I could put Alex Winfield. People go to Flickr's website, they type in as a search string, Pittsburgh, Photos of this may come up. So whether they're looking for this necessarily or not, they may find it, which is pretty interesting. That's just, it's just a, a thought. It seems to me if you have a lot of photos on your personal page, it's going to take a little while to load. It's going to use up a lot of bandwidth. So mm -hmm. if you use something like this to link uh, maybe text to Flickr, yeah, there are my photos here. Absolutely. And there are even in their servers. Mm -hmm. Flickr puts out a, a number of uh, what they call them. I can't get it out here. Like a widget that you can put on your website. So they'll give you a snippet of code that you can put on your website. And what it'll do is sort of display some of your photos on there mm -hmm. in a rotating fashion. When you click on it, it'll take you to Flickr. Mm -hmm. So you can leverage it that way, which is a good, a good thing if you're looking to, to save bandwidth and to sort of do what you're talking about there. So um, Facebook is a good one that's really big with um, the news the past week or so with uh, the Virginia tax shootings. Um, I know NBC did a huge montage of the Facebook hmm. profiles of all the, the, the victims and everything. And, and Facebook is another sort of MySpace-esque type site where you go in there, you put in your interests, you put in your photos, you put in all sorts of different things about you. You link to your friends and it creates a network. And uh, like I said, it's, it's marketed primarily towards don't you have to be in a, in a university yeah. to Yeah, I think we've that up, right? Just last couple in the past couple of months, you don't have to be part of a university. You do have to be either part of a company, a university, or, or some My other My daughter's step. a high schooler and has one local. They community. may do it. Because I thought originally, schools. wasn't it that you had to own originally people in certain only schools? Only, yeah, like, the only schools that they had opened up to. Yeah. And then you had to invite people from other schools and only then they could see your, your stuff. Yeah, right. even but now. They changed you that. Well, even now, you can't see you your schools until you're your friends. Yeah. Okay. One thing about MySpace is generally Everyone. you can flag your you can flag your account as private so that only people you know can see it. Um, with Facebook, you have to be I believe a member of that person unless you go to that school. Is that if you share the same email like, like if you would have an artist who visits your email, then everybody from there can see it. They can all see you at that point. So, so individuals um, must be able to set them up though. I just wanted to expand on that because my daughter's school doesn't. It's not through the school, and hers is all private. And I guess like you said, you have to be invited to. I know they're, 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 they're trying to sell themselves. <laughs> uh, there are a number of um, companies that are trying to buy Facebook right now, okay. including Yonder for many, many billions of dollars um, because of the user base. And so I'm sure they're trying to expand their, their user base because of that, yes. So it's free to join all these and they host your, your little site and all your images and video and, and audio and everything? They'll, they'll host it to a certain degree. Um, you can't put as much content on there as you might on a personal site on a, a, a commercial site, but you can link, you can take your YouTube videos and put them on there. You can link to your Flickr photos and put, put them on like a MySpace account. They may not host everything you have, but they sort of aggregate them for you. Everything, all, all your content can be in one place. Link to your friends' profiles is, is kind of one. Your content isn't one Place, like I uh, for instance, like on my MySpace page, I like a certain YouTube video. So what I do is I get that YouTube video and I link to it on my MySpace page. So when people come to my MySpace page and you see that particular video. But it's actually like living on YouTube. On YouTube. It's living on YouTube. So yeah, there, there's a weird sort of um, but they relationship. Can, they can YouTube play it on your page too, right? They can generally play it on the page too, wow. which is nice and easy. All these uh, networks sort of have a they fight with each other a lot, but they have an understanding that they all sort of feed off of each other. So they allow you, MySpace allows you to look at somebody's Flickr account, and they allow you to look at somebody's MySpace, or uh, somebody's, I'm mixing them up here, somebody's uh, YouTube videos, and uh, vice versa. 
And the YouTube network is for people that actually have videos for YouTube. YouTube is strictly video. Yes. So only for people that have video. Correct. But you can still go, like, I don't, my slate does not do video. But I still have a YouTube account and I still go in and flag <coughs> videos that I like. Generally. So that my friends can see what I like and if they like it, add it to their profile as well. So it's that sort of friend of a friend concept. I was talking about before this. Like, are some of these growing up? Does that mean from within your blog or within your, I guess, profile? My space does. They prevent you to from? No, they, they actually allow you to. It oh. depends what they are, right? Like I said, I wish I had an example where I could kind of show you what they were individually. I okay. have just go in and have that. Right. But Flickr is strictly, strictly photos. There's no real presence there other than your photos. There's no place to put your profile as far as who you are, what website you are. YouTube's very much the same way. It's strictly your videos. Whereas when my, you go to MySpace, like I said, it's more of an aggregator where you can post your happy content and that sort of thing. Uh, Dick and Netscape are a different example of that, particularly for bloggers. Dick and Netscape are social news networks. So somebody that likes a blog post that you put up can submit it to Dig. Other people will see it on Dig and vote, it, vote for it. Either vote that they like it or don't like it. As it gains popularity, it goes to the front page or it moves up in big standings. They sort of rank these by the number of people that have clicked on them. And uh, you can gain a tremendous amount of traffic and different things if you're able to leverage that, if you have stuff that people like. So, similar to Dig is Reddit or DGI. Reddit is also another one now. And there's also an aggregator page that lists most of these as uh, the top ones on each page called popurls.com. I've heard about it, never seen it. Can you talk a little bit about the whole dynamic of this? Like, what, what's a good experience that you've had and, and a bad experience? I mean, I've been on some of these sites and seen people be brutally critical of something that someone's posted. Sure, absolutely. Um, I think anytime you put anything on the internet anywhere, you open yourself up to that potential. Um, generally, though, these sites drive so much traffic to your site that the only downside that I can really see is that it may overload your site. Um, we, my site particularly was on the Dig homepage one time, and it lasted, I believe they said about 27 minutes or so. Uh, and there were so many people hitting it that uh, it crashed, basically. Um, the servers that I had were unable to, to sustain the type of traffic that um, they were, you know, Reddit is a similar site, Netscape has a, has a, a similar site to that. You know, do you open yourself up to that? Kind of scrutiny whenever people do that. Yeah, I mean, you know, anytime you get a chance to, to openly comment about anything, you know, there are a lot of people that will uh, sort of go the low road on you. But uh, I, I generally do not have much of a, much, I can't say anything bad about those sites. You can control that too by uh, moderating the comments that are on your site. Sure. And, and so whenever somebody posts a comment, you have to approve it before it goes it's visible by the public. On your own site. So. Right. You can't do anything about it. For instance, like Dig has their own sub comment system, which is also democratic. You can vote those. You can vote comments up and down at that time. So if something's bad enough, and enough people disagree with it, they can sort of vote it to irrelevance. Like I said, I wish I could show you exactly how these things work. It's somewhat difficult to explain. So with Dig, like, how do you let them know that your blog or your website exists? Do you like submit it? That's a good question. Them? Generally, it's not against the rules, but it's generally having you submit your own stuff to Dig and Netscape. But some of your readers may do it, and um, a lot of sites will facilitate that. Um, Dig, for instance, has a, a uh, mechanism that you can put on your site that has a, a button to the end of every post that you make on your blog that says Dig this. So if somebody on your site that's reading your site likes it, they can click it. It'll auto-submit it to dig for you. And at that point, you're off and running. So, but, um, and I, I'm not sure if Reddit and Netscape have those, those same things, but there are, there are third-party applications if you go out. Do you have a blog now or are you? Um, 
Almost. <laughs> get into it. Um, depending on how you set up your blog, there are some third party plugins for your blog that will facilitate that for you. Um, a lot of times, they'll, they'll be something you can add to your blog that's like a uh, sort of a social add on that'll say you can submit this to Dig, Netscape, all those things, Facebook, whatever. So you generally make it as easy as possible. And Netscape is a search engine, but it's also a community. Not anymore. Netscape, uh, oh, just within the past maybe like year. Wow. Right here. Did they draw? I didn't even know. Yeah, they have a, they have a, a, a basically a big clone. So essentially, they're, they're a social news site now as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. In addition to the browser. Yeah, the Dig by far has the most traffic of any of these, followed by probably Reddit and then Netscape. But they're all good tools. Now it's interesting, I, I just ran into an interesting phenomenon I hadn't seen before. Of course, I've only been in social networking for a couple weeks, but um, I went to, well, uh, a group of us came in here yesterday um, to, to see what the facilities were like, and then we went over to Blue Hands, and then uh, a group also went over to a, a nightclub called Tonic um, over on uh, Liberty Avenue. And uh, uh, so I, I don't ordinarily frequent that sort of thing, but uh, um, Upstairs, there was a group of photographers meeting in Tonic uh, who were all part of Flickr, a, a Pittsburgh group of, of Flickr photographers. And they get together on a monthly basis and uh, either meet at a nightclub or something like that. They all, so you have a room full of people with cameras draped around their necks. It's like you're in a, a, a press conference or something like that. Um, and, and everybody's taking pictures of the of the bar and of the uh, the pictures on the wall and the hotel across the street and stuff like that. And apparently they get together for walks that they'll go on a nature walk or something like that. In, in this group of people who met on Flickr, and uh, uh, Kim Reed was introducing me to people, and there are people who are uh, um, uh, uh, housewives or IT. Uh, uh, directors of, 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 of software <coughs> programming and, and uh, researchers and just a whole, the whole gamut of people. Um, I, I met a couple of people who I talked to uh, PodCamp and I haven't seen them here yet, but uh, hopefully they, they, they came over. But uh, uh, so, so it's just a, a total new facet to uh, the social sites is creating sort of a localized um, social group if, if, you're, if you're willing to share that amount of information with people. The big thing about the go. Okay, just some that example. So, if you went to the Flickr site, you would somehow be able to locate the photographers in Pittsburgh. Well, you you would probably search on something like the tag Pittsburgh, or the tag um, uh, Southside, or things like that. Things that uh, reverberate with the the idea of Pittsburgh. And that would refer you to. Pictures. And that would yeah, that would refer you to pictures people have taken about that. Um, or or if if, if you you wanted to. Uh, do a thing on uh, PodCamp, or a uh, bootcamp, PGH. There's only in the world been one bootcamp PGH, and that's here in Pittsburgh today. Um, so any picture that is tagged with bootcamp PGH will link to photos from today. Okay. Just, just in terms of separating the functions of some of these sites. Yeah, I didn't know where you were talking about. Like the YouTube and the Flickr are more or less storage, or one for pictures, one for video. Yeah. It, yeah, it's like a giant database with. I'm going to start over. But they, they function as uh, essentially the storage places where you keep the things. And from your page, you can refer to the pictures or to the video. Yeah, although most people you'll find will actually go to the site and do their searches there. So they'll go to YouTube and type in uh, Little Black Poodle, uh, looking for any videos dealing with Little Black Poodles. Um, and, and I'm sure, I've never done that search, but I'm guessing there's probably <laughs> some videos out there of little black poodles. Um, and, and it's basic, it's similar to, I think, Flickr, uh, YouTube and, and MySpace and Blogger and stuff, you, you put in tags that people will then search on. Um, and you go to Blogger and you search on uh, Minute Lit. Go ahead, go home and do that <laughs> tonight. Um, that's two words, Minute Lit, uh, and, and see what you come up with. Um, and, and you'll come up, hopefully, with a, a really cool blog that I've seen before. Um, but, uh, uh, just a little plug there. Um, but, yeah, so, so people will put in their links and think the, the, the keywords and stuff that you search on um, in each of these locations. So you could, tonight you could go home and 
do a search on MySpace or on Flickr or on YouTube on PodCamp Pittsburgh, uh, which was the event that was held in November and is going to begin in, in August of this year. Um, and you'll, you'll see items uh, on each of those sites dealing with uh, this particular thing. Because uh, Justin told people basically, when you're doing media type of uh, references, make sure you use these words. Are you saying someone searching for something, they first go to one of these and then put in what it is they want to find, or they just actually they'll probably just go to Google. Just go to Google and put it up. But they can't go to the DC. They want Pittsburgh, or they want Southside. Right. So they start through Google by just putting in Pittsburgh. Is that just yeah. Right, Pittsburgh South Side is hopefully there's from the South Side in Hong Kong. Um, so uh, hopefully you just get the, the South Side, or maybe you want to spell it S O U S I D E, um, something like that. But uh, yeah, yeah, generally people will just type in keywords that they think will make the hits. Or they can go for one of Well, I'm saying they can do the same thing at YouTube. They'll go to YouTube and type in the keyword um, that they think will make the link. So what you're saying is. Uh, like Google picks up their uh, key, their, their keywords, whatever. And Google is constantly watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the big things um, I think that maybe we didn't explain is that a lot of these social sites are prefaced on the fact that whenever you upload content to it, whenever you put your pictures on, your videos on, your blog posts on, whatever it is, generally they will ask you for what they call a tag. Now, a tag is like a sort of dynamic um, category. Usually when they ask you for a category, it fits into one category. It's either sports, or it's action, or it's comedy, or it's whatever. Um, when you put a photo on Flickr, for instance, it'll ask you for a tag. So you can put in any number of things. You can put in Pittsburgh, you can put in Southside, you can put in PodCamp PTH, you can put in Bootcamp PTH, and it will fit into all of those so that when people go to their sites and search for, like I said, just Pittsburgh, they won't just find a general Pittsburgh sort of category in general Pittsburgh content. They might find different things that fit into several subcategories. So when you search Pittsburgh, you may find things that are about the South Side. You may find things that are about who can PTAs. You may find things that are about the strip district or the Steelers or whatever the case may be. And that's kind of a difficult concept for a lot of new people to understand that you know, these things have a really intricate web of different categories that sort of cross over and something may fit in many, many categories all simultaneously. So, do you have a question? No, I was going to say that the problem that I have with those sites is that there are a lot of people out there that will use something that's not really related yeah. to get hits and advertising. No, so those, like, for instance, like if I had a porn company, which I don't, but if I had one, Some sites are addressing that in that um, they sort of have, in the same instance on date where you can go in and load a story up, if you don't like that story, or you don't think that story fits the category it's in for whatever reason, you can flag it right there. Generally, they'll give you a, a, a mechanism to do that. And it works as a foolproof nah. Is it like similar to the portion in YouTube? You know, I've had a vast experience where people either, if they, if they don't like it honestly, Hopefully everybody's MySpace stuff and, and uh, YouTube stuff will be popular enough for the amount of people to hate it if they don't want to put it down someday. So. Oh. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. But anyway, it's, you know, this is big because I've never used big, I've seen it. So I think it's, it's very much like that. Um, right. You know, you have you know, sort of clicks of people that um, do not like something, or do not like a particular poster, so they'll in mass go there and try and put that story off of the page. Um, you know, I guess your complaint at that point goes to the site owner to say, hey, these people are... There are a lot of these sites that say that if they find somebody doing what you're talking about, they will cancel their account and block their IP address. So they, if you, if you know if somebody's doing that to you specifically, then you report it, they check it out, but they, they tag the IP addresses 
they'll they're gone. Dig is very transparent um, in that they admit that they program against this. Um, they look at trends and different people that are all voting for the same thing at the same time. So you know they sort of get these mobs together of ten user accounts that all vote for the same thing every single time. They sort of program against that and diminish their their power. Um, and Dig takes a lot of heat for that from those people. Keeps things more quote unquote fair, um, so that things like that don't happen as often. Are you open to that? Sure. Going back to the community aspect of it too, it also seems to me that it wouldn't just be moderated; it would be participatory. That the people that are on the site would have input into this is happening. And let's and that's what all these play. sites are founded on. Oh, okay. It's less less of a big brother moderator and more of um, democratic. Say, yeah, the democratic uh, wisdom of masses sort of aspect to it. If enough people like it, it'll float to the top. Like if enough people dislike it, they'll bear. It's like so like how many people use video to get more get the higher rating. Right. And YouTube allows you to rate videos, they'll give you like a five star system. And if it sucks, I mean it'll it'll be low. Like for instance, like um, they have like a contest out I can't remember which one it is right now and generally like as just a regular I will look at the star ratings because usually by looking at the stars, it must mean that the video has to be significantly better than the rest of the video. So naturally, I'm going to watch that one first. And there might be a really great video that I overlooked because the rating was only like a one or a two. So it's really hard to. It's just like the movie. You know, yeah. exactly. I mean, anytime there's any <laughs> potential for something to be voted up, gain more traffic than anything, anything like that. People are always going to try to gain the system. Um, the only thing that you can do is complain <laughs> and uh, try and uh, you know, hope that the, the site creators have a contingency for that. And like I said, is it perfect? No, of course not. You know, you're never going to make everybody happy with that. So, so there's some good ways to make friends on other networks. Absolutely. Um, particularly with Dig. One of the things that Dig allows you to do when I go to Dig's homepage, it lists all the most popular stories of the day or of the time. And I can actually see on that page who the people on my friends list have voted for, whether they voted it up or down. But, but you'll have to already have a friends list, right? Like, so like if I go jo join some of these, mm -hmm. how can you like, start? The big thing, uh, particularly, uh, take MySpace for instance. One of the big things I did with MySpace was to find the, the people that I knew personally had MySpace pages and set them up. Then I started to look for sort of regional things. I looked for uh, Pittsburgh-centric sort of things. I searched in MySpace to, to look for uh, venues around Pittsburgh and bars that I went to, different things like that that had a MySpace profile, and then I friended that. So and a lot of businesses also have, have a profile? Um, the tendency on this stuff is that businesses within demographic do. Um, like for instance, and again I'm using MySpace as an example, bars and concert venues and bands and different things like that tend to have MySpace pages because they're catering into a little bit younger crowd and that's who has MySpace profiles generally. Um, but there are a ton of niche social networks out there that may fit the demographic of your site or your blog or your podcast or whatever. For instance, there is a um, Tribune review site that's SteelersLive.com that basically it aggregates all the big Steelers news stories of the day from different sites, and people can get on there and vote it up. And frequently, my site goes on there because my fans like it, and then different people from around Pittsburgh who may have never heard me, who may have never heard my site, see it on the church site and read it and either like it or don't. There are a bunch of these popping up that are movie sites. There are all sorts of different things. I think the biggest thing you want to do is try to figure out who your, your audience is and, and who your peers are and things like that and search them out on these types of networks. Do you know if any of these are a good uh, have, have like people like are like, 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 an entrepreneur? Everybody's an entrepreneur. Not everybody. Uh, well, I, not everybody, but everybody who's putting themselves into the public is basically uh, uh, being entrepreneurial about 
their presence. I mean, this is sort of the, the neat thing. People don't think about this, but really, anytime you're putting yourself out into the public eye, you're, you're trying to create an image of yourself. And that's what businesses do, because they're trying to create an image of themselves so that people will come back and buy their product. Um, well, and then so blogs, people, they're, they're trying to create a, a general community of people who will come back and read their blog. I mean, most people like me, I just write uh, because I want to read my blog. Um, but, uh, it, and if other people come and read it, that's fine. But it, it's not necessary. Um, but, uh, uh, so, so basically, as you was saying, you, you really want to find your, uh, the, the type of group you want to cater to. And, and look for what the, what things they are utilizing. Um, uh, so within these networks, mm -hmm. within these mm -hmm. networks. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, there are a number of niche networks out there as well. I'm just listening. I could be up here all day. I could fill this whole board up with, with social networks. Yeah, the library thing is a niche network. Yeah, library. It, 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 it's, I, uh, I, I met Dawn actually through library thing, and that's how we, we decided to do a podcast, because we're both interested in some of the same books. Um, I, I found out about library thing through, I was Googling something and, and found out about, oh, no, no, it was an article, because uh, I do a lot of research on Yahoo's finance site, um, uh, and, and just uh, found a, a link to a, a startup company in California, and one of their, uh, very unusual for startup companies, to put personal blog links within their uh, officers' pages. And this link, this guy had his link to library thing, and he had some very interesting books. So I, I started going through. In the library thing, you can you enter an ISBN or something like that of your uh, all the books in your library, one by one, um, <laughs> and uh, uh, and you can it, it'll basically give all the titling information of your books. Um, you can uh, uh, do a review of your book because other people are doing reviews, and then all of a sudden. As soon as you've entered that book, you get a listing down the right hand side of all the other people worldwide on library thing who have the same book in their collection. And dig is the same way. When I go to dig a story, when I vote for a story, it'll show me a list of everybody else that voted for that story. Now, if I vote for eight, nine, ten stories while I'm there, different things, you start to see a pattern of people. Hey, I'm voting the same as this guy. Well, I don't know. He must like a lot of the same stuff I do. Maybe I'll make him my friend. Next time I come to the site, I'll see what he does, and that'll be a good jump off point for me. Okay, so but my question was about um, like, are, are any of these networks uh, it, are, like, better or if, if your focus is like small business development? Because I think a, a lot of people are uh, on the same small thing. business development. Because, yeah, in what particular? Uh, and like you, you were saying, everybody out online is an entrepreneur, but I think a, like a lot of the like, people on these networks are there just for, for social reasons, and mm -hmm. you, you know they're not out there to make. But isn't part of small, small, small business development it's social? It's not always talking money. It's not always money. You're looking for people that want to make money. Not, that's not right. What you're looking for clearly. So you're, you're thinking of ownership. ownership. You're talking of interaction. The social sale. The what is your goal? Let me ask that. Like, like, what, who particularly are you looking for? Are you looking for other entrepreneurs like you in the sense that you're building a small for profit business? Okay. Well, I do not know one off the top of my head, but I would imagine there are some out there. There's particularly one called LinkedIn, which I will have here. Yeah, LinkedIn is a good site. Another uh, which is I'm starting Yahoo Group. You, you can go in and do searches in Yahoo groups, and there's so many groups. And then I'll go and join these groups, and these groups, by reading, getting, you know, their fees, I get resources of other information that has led me to mm -hmm. uh, that stuff that I need. LinkedIn is a very good one for what you're talking about. Some of them are private, some are public. Some are actually public. I'm talking like the Yahoo groups. Sometimes you can just get in, sometimes you just have to submit some stuff and they'll let you in, sometimes they don't. I think they're not. But, I don't, you know, I'm just saying that's just one of these stories I do that has led me to phenomenal leads of resources by joining the other, you know, things. I think that a good place for you to land, that's a good, excellent point, excellent point. I think a good place for you to start with LinkedIn, which is a social network of uh, primarily business people looking to make the 
those sorts of contacts um, to stop the thought in my head. And there may be other ones out there like that that are more um, uh, specific to exactly what you're looking for that I do not know off the top of my head. That, that's what but I mean, there are hundreds and thousands of Once you start there. into it, so, these, these places, you'll find out about yeah. it. You'll see people talk about it. Let me look at you. That's what you may go into LinkedIn and search for some business associates. A lot of times it'll ask for your address book, for your email address book, and it'll compare it to the people that are hooked up with LinkedIn. And they'll say, hey, you know this person, they already have an account, let me show you. Send me an email and send me an invitation to LinkedIn. There you go. Yeah, and do, you, do I have to be invited? Pardon? Do I, have to be I think, to don't, don't you have to be invited or, or set, you send somebody an invitation for LinkedIn? If you don't have their email address, I believe that every person that you add to your network allows you like five unsolicited ads. Mm -hmm. They have some mm -hmm. crazy name for it, um, but I don't Thank know. You. You're it, it, it's, it would be a good place for you to start, though. Yeah, yeah. so I spend a huge difference. Like, I teach them at Santa sometimes. I used to be on the rock to let get positive when I'm doing, you know, I'll join groups for a while. Get the resources because I'm not interested in that group, but I got the resources that I needed from that group. And sometimes they're dead end. You know, you just gotta it's, let's just explore. And I do apologize. This is a very, very broad topic. That, yeah. And don't I can do days on really. Don't discount MySpace because it's, it seems like a young social networking site. There are many, many companies that have MySpace pages. I know that most authors, because you don't get a whole lot of um, money up front when you're a first time author to pub for publicity and for promotions of your book, Every, I know authors and I've seen publishing houses that encourage their authors to make a MySpace page specifically for their new book. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a viral marketing campaign and it goes everywhere. And so it depends on your product. You know, if you're doing music, if you're doing art, if you're doing, like in the last session, sauce, like, you know, whatever it's going to be. It, you can generally, I'm willing to bet you'll be able to find entrepreneurs somewhere on MySpace, and you can lock out other people if you don't want in there. And so, because it's so big, it's a really powerful tool to get your, your information known. So you might have a MySpace page in addition to, like I already have my own blog, but I want to have a blog. That's what I do. Exactly, I, right. I'm in the same situation. I have my blog for my review site. And I went, because I wanted more traffic, I went to MySpace, took the name like we talked about, and set up basically what I call a mirror site, where I have, I'll post some of the major blog posts that I put on my blog on MySpace. And it, it drives a ton of traffic, because the more people that you become friends with, because they're out they see. exploring in that community, right. and, and then it takes them from there exactly. to the And the more friends you accumulate, every time you post a comment, this sounds really backwards and maybe really shady, but every time you post a comment on your friend's site, people will see that and think, oh, who's this person? Click, and they'll go to your page. And sort of like snowball viral marketing effect. Yeah, it's oh, just yeah, a snowball. Like, yeah, they see that's like, oh, I'm a person. Who's that? And it's worked really well for me. It really has. So what you're saying is, look, if you want to, if you join these groups and you want to meet people and make friends, you go to, a, you, you, you can search for a topic you're interested in and find people yep. and, and, and join their conversation. And there, like, a lot of these places have groups, too. Like, I know the library thing, and uh, I don't know if you, I don't think YouTube, but I know uh, MySpace and MySpace Facebook, have groups, so. they have groups of interest. So, like, if I wanted to talk about comic books, then I can put in comic books, and there are thousands of people that are, have that as an interest. Mm -hmm. Then there are specialized groups. I like, you know, sci-fi comic books. I like fantasy comic books. I like, you know. So they whittle it down for you. And it, absolutely, it's very helpful. And I would venture to say that there are probably small groups. And even within that, there's maybe like you can work with the Batman, the Superman. Yeah, it, it can be very, very, very limited. At this time, the thing about these sorts of things is, what are they saying it's moving to now? I heard it was a big one. Facebook is also really big. It's more of a demographic. Those in the know will tell you, oh, 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 MySpace is going down. We're moving over to something else. But the important thing is to set up an account and just learn about the media, the medium. Um, and, and and as Don was saying, you'll get links, you'll get comments, that sort of thing. Um, uh, now, as Steve said, you don't. Uh, you may have issues with uh, uh, people leaving 
uh, like spam po uh, post comments or something like that, or nasty comments. But as Don was saying, I think you can moderate a lot yeah. of that. They, they give you a, a, a method to fix that. Yeah, I think you have to, you have to be kind of focused about these things because you can spend like five hours a day just online exploring and, and you know, like, yeah. Like, Absolutely. Uh, being in these conversations. And, you know, it's definitely a time But if you're, if you're marketing your blog or your site or your content, whatever it may be, that may be marketing time well spent. Um, if you're able to pull more readers or pull more viewers or you know, pull just more interest in general, you getting your name out there. Like, generally, it's time well spent. We're going to go and explore a little bit. Yes. Are there any danger in using Lightspeed for any of the for virus or anything else like that? Kind of Nothing like that. Are there any dangers? There, there, are, there are always people, it, it's just like using email. It's generally no more susceptible than that. Um, if somebody sends you a suspect link or a suspect file or something like that, if somebody sent it to you in the email, you probably wouldn't open it. Right. There's no reason for you. The main thing to be worried about is new ideas. Yes. Well, new <laughs> ideas. <laughs> that, that gets into something else. Yes. Particularly looking at, for example, on YouTube, I turn on for a So I can see some of your creativity lending itself to my branding, but I also see value in that creativity. Do you surrender some aspects of your ownership? Or probably, I mean, at the price of, of Moving your name forward, so I suppose you might have that. Are you worried about derivatives and that sort of? Well, for instance, if I you mentioned something like a, a concert venue, if I took a photograph of a concert venue and I posted it on Flickr, mm -hmm. and a concert promoter was having that same uh, that same band at a venue they were they were having, they might take that photograph and use it for promotion, something like that. That might be an obscure example, but that's the only way I can think of the moment. Some of these sites, whenever you upload to a social site like this, you take that chance. Mm -hmm. um, so you're definitely surrendering some of your Unless you know so you kind of you're in the water you're signing up copyright in your I'm sorry, it's unless you watermark it, you get to the yeah. yeah. show up in the Which people do. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. There's, there are there's a number of photos on, on Flickr sure. that are There are a number of places, like, I know, at least my experience with, like, Photo Bucket and Flickr and things like that, you don't have control over who can copy or link to the, that picture. But a place like DeviantArt, I don't know if anybody's heard of that, you know, a lot of artists and photographers go there. DeviantArt and Epilogue.net, I think, are the, is the other one. Um, you can control whether or not somebody can right-click and copy your picture, or and you can put your terms of use. You can say, you know, you're only allowed to use this if you reference me, or contact the author first. Because I know a lot of people that have used images for their avatars or on their site that they just found, and they've been threatened with lawsuits and they have to remove them because, hey, this was on my terms of use. So if you want to protect yourself that way, there are sites that will allow that. They're just not as readily accessible as like Photobuck and When you website. sign up, the best thing for you to do is just read a little bit. Because generally, they're, they're pretty transparent about what their, their terms of use are, mm -hmm. whether people are allowed to take it or not. And, um, it, it seems like with images, um, since you can't search for it or anything, unless there's an alt tab, which they probably wouldn't put an alt tab that's, that would, could be linked to you, how would you ever know if anybody's stealing your image? You can, there's Google Images you can search. So if I put in um, kitten, like Calico Kitten, and I went to Google and it says images right next to, I think, web, and you click that, you get <laughs> sometimes thousands of pages of calico kittens. Right, but, but unless they have an alt tag that you can somehow trace to yourself, you, you would never ever know if somebody's using your image. Right. Yeah, if somebody sometimes. actually physically took it and uploaded it, you would probably know that. Anytime you post anything on the net, you take that chance. Right. Oh, yeah. What's Twitter quickly? You didn't talk oh, about yeah. that one. Twitter is bad. another one that's very <laughs> difficult to explain. Basically, what Twitter is is, are you guys familiar with what an instant messenger is? Like, AOL is a messenger, Yahoo is a messenger, different things like that. Twitter is a website you sign into, and basically you accrue a friends list on there. And you're able to send instant messages that go to everybody on the friends list, not just directed at one person like the instant messenger. Like for instance, on my Twitter account, Justin Kalnacki is on there, Chris Brogan, who talked in the keynote, is in there as well, Mike Wojcik, who also did that. So I can put 
message up on there. It's basically what are you doing right now. When I'm writing stuff for my site, a lot of times I'll put it writing, writing a blog post about blah, blah, blah on there. And when I'm finished with it, people can go directly there without having to seek it out or without having to hit my site and look for new posts. Different things like that. Instantaneous. Sort of communication. So everyone who goes there has to be a member of themselves. You can't enter people on their own. Like I don't you think can't so. Your mailing list. Or, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. And I, I know you, there are restriction options on there. So um, you know, people are starting to use it more as a business tool. Yeah, so they'll get right. four, five, six people that they collaborate with in their list, close that list, and then only send them the updates. Um, it's really in its infancy. Um, will it last or not? Depends if you ask. It's like the big new thing. But you really people, have to see it to understand. A lot of people are using it with Blackberries or with their uh, cell phones or with their uh, uh, whatever their mobile device is. If of you choice. see uh, Justine uh, Azurian, I think is her last name, um, who's, who's doing a few no. sessions here. She's on her Blackberry. All I just day. know her. She's, she's getting seen. Twitters from people yeah. whose list she's on, and they're saying, "I'm out in the park. I'm blogging about this. I just posted a podcast." On this, check out this link. They're sending those into their Twitter list, and she happens to be on that list. So. But how is that so different from just creating in your email system a group and you email them? It's a little faster, more, more instantaneous, more concise. Um, people generally don't like to get 50 emails a day. You know, it depends who you are and where you are, of course. But I can send a Twitter out, and they can choose whether or not to read it. They can just okay. totally. So I can get instantaneous. When I post something on my site, I can have an instantaneous response from it just by clicking it on Twitter and sending it to the people I know. And a lot of people like it because it, you can do te text messaging to get into it. Um, you, you can use your cell phone or your uh, Blackberry or something like that and just uh, or you can shoot right into it. Or, right. There are a number of uh, different things you can have it sent to an instant messaging client. Um, so it's really a brand new sort of thing. It's interesting. You guys should check it out. Like I said, if you check out the website. I gotta get you out of here. You're gonna be late for your next one. But check out the website. Lunch is next. Oh, is it lunch? You don't yeah. want to be late for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put all the sites that we talked about up on bootcamppth.org. If you look at the intro to social networking, that way you guys can check them out. If you have questions, my contact information will be on there as well as Alex's. There are some business cards up here if you guys want to take them. Feel free to email me. Do whatever you gotta do to uh, get a hold of me, and I'd be happy to. Thanks, thank, thank you. you.